Hey guys, my name is Sid. Welcome to another vlog. Now this bag over here is full of my new motorcycle gear. So I just want to share a little bit with you guys as you might have seen my previous vlog. I'm planning to buy a motorcycle and in order to buy a motorcycle in Dubai, you have to get your motorcycle license and in order to get your motorcycle license, you have to have some gear. I decided to get the gear that I wanted to use for when I finally decided to ride after my license. So I wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I got. So let's get into it. Okay, the first most important thing is my helmet. So this is the Bell Qualifier helmet that I picked up. If you are thinking of getting into motorcycles or plan to ride a bike, it is a must to wear gear. And I'm planning to be as safe as possible. I know my parents are probably watching this video. So mom, dad, I'm planning to be extra, extra safe. That's why I bought all this gear. And I bought high quality gear. I value my life. So that's why I've gone and bought some decent, there's not like extremely expensive gear, but like medium range, but high quality. So this is my helmet. This is the Bell Qualifier helmet. Um, I wanted to get a black one, but then I decided to get a one with a little bit more camo so that there's a little bit more visibility. Now, if you wanted the ultimate in visibility, you'd probably get something a bit more colorful, but I really like the look of this. And most probably I'm gonna go with the Harley. So on a Harley, on a street rod, I don't think like a super colorful helmet would work so well. So anyway, this is my helmet. It's got this cool camo look. Uh, the Bell Qualifier is supposed to be one of the best budget, like mid-range helmets. It's got DOT certification. If it's DOT certified, that means that it's been through a bunch of crash tests and stuff. So a third party has given it its rating. Now, if you want something better, like there's probably the Snell rating, which I've heard is supposed to be superior to the DOT rating as well, but DOT is good enough. And this is a 2020 helmet, so it's got all the latest equipment inside it. Now, if you plan to buy a helmet, don't buy a used one because you never know what damage that helmet might have gone through. So always best to get a new one. Now this helmet has a bunch of cool features. As you can see, it's got like these uh, wind channels in the head, on the face, on the sides as well. At the back, there's some channels for the air to flow through your head. The thing is when I used to ride bikes before, I never used to wear a helmet. Uh, and it's not because I didn't want to, it's because I didn't own one. <laughs> and that was a long time ago. So uh, I was a little apprehensive about wearing a helmet. I was wondering how, you know, like how much air you would get inside there with the visor closed and all, but because of all these air channels, it's absolutely fine. In fact, when I'm riding in the sun right now, uh, it gives you a bunch of protection for your head and stuff. It actually feels cooler inside the helmet than it does outside. Uh, just because the, the sun is not beating down on your head. So this is a really nice helmet. It's got plenty of protection inside it as well. And it's got a bunch of features that I wanted, like uh, it's got special ear cups inside it where you can mount. They're called Senas. I know a bunch of other companies make them as well. I think Cardo makes one. So they're these like Bluetooth adapters that you put on the side of your helmet and they route to speakers inside your helmet and you can use that to communicate with a pack of riders or connect it to your phone and use it as a Bluetooth system inside your helmet for music and things like that. So this helmet has all those features. It's got special cavities inside them to house your speakers and uh, mounting for you know the, any kind of Sena system. In that sense, this is a really good helmet. Also, I just love the way it looks. I think it looks really nice. It's got an interchangeable uh, visor as well. So I was thinking of putting a photochromatic visor on this so it turns a bit darker in the sun. And even fit wise, it's really good for me. It's a little tight around the cheeks, but they said that once I wear it in, it should be better. Second thing I picked up with these shoes, these are called the Style Martin shoes. Now these are motorcycle shoes, they're like designed for motorcycles. So you know the soles, as you can see, I've been using them a bit, so the soles are a bit dirty, but they have all the grip so that when you put your feet down from the motorcycle, you get good traction. Uh, it's got protection, it's got armor on the back of it, on the front of it as well for your toe. It's got armor on the ankle as well. So these things aren't gonna move when it's on your feet. You feel like it's definitely protected. But I do like the look of them. They look like your normal shoes. Like when you're walking around with these, they don't look like heavy duty 
motorcycle shoes and that's why I went for something like this. These are really comfortable as well and I think style wise they look pretty cool. Now to go with these guys I also got these pair of gloves. These are the Bastille gloves by Revit. I quite like the style of them. They look quite classic and retro. Uh, they're really comfortable, like you have a lot of flexibility in all your fingers. Uh, it's also got like protection on each finger as well as the knuckle area. And it's got a pad over here as well, so in case you slide, uh, it's gonna protect you over there. Now, I don't know how they've done it, but these uh, gloves have uh, good ventilation in them. My hands never get sweaty when I'm riding the bike using these. It doesn't have sliders on it, so that's something I just found out about. So sliders are such that it reduces the friction of your hand. So if you're sliding, you don't get caught in something and twist your hand if you fall. Uh, this doesn't have that, but overall I'm quite happy with this glove, but there is one annoying thing about it and that is that it is not touch sensitive. So you can't use your phone using this thing. Now when I bought these gloves, I looked at this thing and on this it specifically says that they are touch sensitive, but I haven't been able to get it working in any sense on my phone. So if you do stop and you want to make a call, you have to remove the glove each time, which is a little bit annoying. I love the look of these guys, but I do wish that I'd picked up something with touch sensitivity, even though I specifically looked for that. I don't know, is Revit lying to me or what is it? Like sight, it doesn't mention anything about touch sensitivity, but alas, uh, now I have these gloves and they weren't cheap. The shoes cost about 400 dirhams, these gloves cost about 350 dirhams. Honestly, I wouldn't have gone for these if I knew they weren't touch sensitive, but I did like the matching look of the brown and the brown of the leather over here. It looks like it's a set. I'm looking into some solution where I can make it touch sensitive, hopefully. There's something off the shelf that I can buy and do that. Now the next thing I got, which is a requirement in Dubai when you're doing your motorcycle license, is these pads over here. So these are like knee pads, shin guards, and an elbow and uh, you know forearm guards. So these things protect you uh, in case you fall as well. So these are required. You have to be wearing these when you're learning to ride a motorcycle. It's part of the Dubai RTA requirement, which is a good thing. I think you should be protected at all times. But um, you know, there's a lot of gear that can put all this padding directly into your clothes. And uh, that's the kind of jacket I've bought. So um, let me show you the jacket. So this is the Revit riding jacket. This was about 500 dirhams or so and the reason I bought a jacket like this is because Let me stand up and do this part But this jacket's cool couple of reasons one is it's got padding all throughout it So there's padding in the shoulder there's padding in the sides of here as well So you've got protection there uh, It's all the way up to here actually so even if you were to take a fall like this even at the back over here There's a little bit of padding uh, there is no padding at the back, but there is space to put a piece of padding back here. So I do plan to get that extra piece of padding for spine protection. The jacket is quite light and airy actually. There's like vents over here. So that you see it's like mesh material over here. So it lets the wind come in uh, and flow out through the back. So you're not gonna feel too hot in a jacket like this. This is meant to be a um, summer jacket. It fits quite snug, but very comfortable to move your arms. It's got customization in the side as well, so you can make it as loose or tight as you like. So uh, same for the arms as well, customization for the arms. I just love all the engineering that these guys put into like motorcycle gear, just you know, to get the right kind of fit and stuff. This is a really cool jacket, I like it. And let me show you the whole look that I was kind of going for. By the way, I never knew this, but apparently the easiest way to put on a motorcycle helmet is just to put your fingers like this, spread this apart and just pull your helmet down. So this is kind of the full look that I was going for. Um, you know, obviously I'd be wearing riding pants as well. So I haven't bought my riding pants as yet. Uh, plan is to get them soon. Those will have protection for your knees, for your shins, inbuilt into the pants as well, as well for your hips. And uh, it's really important actually, like back when I was living in Pune, I did have an accident once. And the thing that affected me the most was when I fell on the road, 
Uh, I must have been going at like 60 or 70 kilometers per hour. And uh, when I fell, I, I was wearing jeans at the time and I skid across the road and that ripped my jeans apart. And then my whole leg had lacerations all over it. It wasn't bleeding heavily or anything like that, but it's just like skin kind of gets burnt on the road. And uh, that's the reason I definitely want to get some riding pants because those have abrasion protection. So even when you slide on the road, they have like all this Kevlar material and stuff inside them that prevents them from shredding or, you know, transferring too much heat to your body. So definitely picking up riding pants soon. Still haven't decided which one to get, but we'll be getting those as well. Now, let me show you one really cool thing that I got, which I think is probably the best way to mount a GoPro on your helmet if you plan to make videos on motorcycles. Now, I was researching different ways to mount a camera on my helmet because I do plan to make some motor vlogs, especially I'm gonna show the process of like how to get your license and all that. So if you are interested in that, stay tuned. But the typical way would be to put some kind of glue on your helmet, stick on a GoPro mount, and then, uh, you know, have that dry for a bit, and then you would be able to mount your camera on this thing. But since I don't want to spoil the finish of the helmet, this is a GoPro chin mount. And this was specially designed for the bell helmet. Now the advantage of buying something like this bell helmet is that it is a very popular helmet. And uh, the more popular something is, the more accessories you usually find for something like this. So this is apparently designed for the bell helmet and it works with a bunch of other well-known helmets like AVG and all that. So uh, if you guys are interested, I will leave a link in the description. I bought this from the UAE Amazon store. It just sits on your helmet like this. There's a strap that will go through and gives you a GoPro mount right up here. So let me just do this real quick. Okay, guys, this is the chin mount, as you can see. It's got a GoPro head right here and it fits quite well on the helmet. This thing's not moving around at all. You do have these hanging straps over here, but uh, I think I can hide them inside the cheek guards of the helmet. Now, I don't know if I've set this up right. I think it should be the other way around. These ends should be. It doesn't matter though. The, the whole thing is stable. My air vents are still open. I can't get to the control. Actually, I still can. So, this is like a perfect setting. This thing is not going to move around, never fall off your helmet. It's pretty low profile as well. It doesn't stick off the helmet too much. Let's put a GoPro on here and see what it looks like. So I mounted my GoPro upside down, as you can see. It's completely out of the way of anything. It's out of the way of my vents. It's out of the way of anything else. I can change the angle if I want. I could mount it the other way as well, but then it would be coming in my line of sight. Or I could mount this thing upside down and have the GoPro come up just a little bit. So now you guys are seeing me from the GoPro angle. This is what my setup looks like when I'm filming in this room. As you can see, certain parts of this room are a mess. I'm also going to be checking out this Insta One 360 edition very soon. Just want the right opportunity. Something cool is coming up, guys. So this is going to be coming in clutch then. So um, I wanted to see how the sound quality was with this helmet as well. Just if I want to do a POV kind of shot with the GoPro. But yeah, so this is it for the motor vlogging setup so far. So I have already ordered the GoPro mic accessory. It's so annoying that you can't just plug in a mic into this GoPro, but if you're on the road, you're not gonna be able to hear anything from this GoPro. So I've already ordered the GoPro mic and that's gonna get into the helmet somehow. So you get this other case as well, which has the housing for the mic in there as well. And then I'll experiment with whether I want to keep it this way or the other way around. Currently, I like it this way because it doesn't block any of the air vents for my face. So guys, I'm almost done with my internal road test. Then I have another two weeks to do with on-road training. And then, hopefully, if everything goes well, I should have my license. So, uh, looking forward to get my bike. I've almost decided. It's probably going to be the Harley Street Rod, but... Uh, I still have a few weeks to go, I might change my mind. So 
If you guys like this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to watch more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.